this episode of Voice Votes, I am at the campus of the Delhi School of Economics, a campus where our present Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, was a professor. I am with four students of economics. I am going to begin by asking them about the dichotomy between welfare economics and the liberalized policies that we've been seeing for the past few years. What is the way forward for India? Well, uh, in, there has been a lot of inequality in India. So basically, measures like uh, Manrega and right, right to education and right to health is, is a major, uh, is, is a major uh, achievement of, of the UPA and also uh, administrative reforms like, like the RTI. Growth will not bring the welfare welfare economics will not happen simultaneously it has to be worked throughout worked by the hand of the government from the bottom like the people have to be uplifted rather than hoping that the growth will automatically uplift them out of poverty we're talking about BJP's economics which clearly veers towards the corporates we're talking about Congress's economics also but do you think that BJP's policies really leave the have-nots wanting uh, so, uh, of course, when one looks at the economic growth of, say, a state like Gujarat and the kind of social development indicators, human development indicators, one clearly sees a dichotomy between two, in the sense that economic growth has been very high, perhaps one of the highest in the country, while the improvement in, like, uh, just few days back, I was looking at a statistic like infant mortality rate in Gujarat is higher than in what it is in Jharkhand. Now, everyone agrees that Jharkhand is in a very terrible shape. You're talking about Narendra Modi who thinks that the Gujarat model of growth is his biggest asset. But can we forget 2002? Can we forget the riots in Gujarat? No, I don't think so. Because secularism is, is a major factor in a, of our country. For example, in 2002, million, uh, thousands of Muslims were killed. We, we can't forget that. And there has been a, a section of, uh, of our society which feels that if, if Modi becomes PM, we, we won't be the part of our, of our country. Look, look at the ticket distribution that has been done. Uh, you, you have refused the ticket to, to a seven-time MP just because he, he, he was, he was an, an aide of uh, Mr. Adwani. You have sidelined Mr. Adwani. You have sidelined Jaswant Singh. You have sidelined Murli Manohar Joshi. Uh, and, and, and you are now contesting yourself from, from Varanasi. When we talk about markets in the past few uh, days, we've seen a market rally. Chidambaram, uh, our present finance minister, claims that it is because of the certain steps that UPA has taken in the past few months. But obviously, Narendra Modi would want us to believe otherwise. Which do you think is a more credible claim? I don't think that the expectation of somebody forming a new government can just uh, get such an increase in the market factors that we are seeing lately. UPA has taken very good steps in the past two years but we have to take the in con into consideration the fact that they have not been at all helped by the opposition. So there have been lot of disturbances in the parliament given those facts I think UPA has undertaken a lot of reforms in the past two years efforts to contain the deficit and the RBA's effort will certainly show some effect in the market rally. Indian economy is not as delinked from the global economy as we are often tend to think. So when global economy is in such a poor shape, Europe is not at all growing, uh, American economy is in poor shape, we can't expect India to grow at rate of 8% and 9%. Even China is now, China's growth rate is now de uh, declining. So uh, second point of course is that the agenda of opposition in last two, three years has been, we agree with what you want to do, but we won't let you do that, we won't let the parliament function. But at the same time, UPA also has not been, uh, has not, uh, didn't have its own house in order. The ministers refused to take responsibility, prime minister refused to take responsibility, and that is the thing which has hurt most, I think. There's one problem that uh, the Indian politicians are facing for the past few years. If you distance yourself from corporates, you say there's a trust deficit. If there is too much veering towards corporates, we say it's crony capitalism. How do you think that Indian politicians should address their, uh, their relationship with corporate India? I think it has to be a balanced approach. You can't tilt in either direction. You can't say somebody raising the gas prices is also corruption and somebody using first come first service policy is also corruption. Neither of these is corruption. These are just policy decisions they have taken. Maybe that was not the right policy decision, but it is a policy decision. That is the role of the opposition to question every decision, but the way the opposition has been behaving recently, that's, that's altogether uh, another scenario. So disrupting the parliament, I, that's a very uh, naive point, but I think disrupting the parliament should be banned. A classic example could be, uh, like he said, first come, first serve basis. Could, couldn't we say that, that, that we compare it to corruption? 
for example, Mr. Arvind Kejriwal, uh, while giving that uh, anti-corruption helpline number, he, I, I think he, uh, he, he gave that to, to a call center yes. and, and he didn't auction that. So should we call that he, he, he took some money for that? Rahul Gandhi has been talking about RTI, he's been talking about other structural issues, democratizing the entire political process. So when he talks about these issues, does it appeal to you? Yeah, it does. The, the primaries, for example, it, it is, I, I think so that no, uh, in, in future it, it will be a ma major asset for, for our country. On a scale of 10, how, will you, how much will you give a Rahul Gandhi, a Narendra Modi and an Arvind Kejriwal keeping their economics in mind? A 6 on 10 to Rahul Gandhi, 4 on 10 to uh, Arvind Kejriwal and probably a 7 on 10 to Narendra Modi. What about you? I think not Rahul Gandhi, UPA I'll give 7 on 10, Narendra Modi again 6.5 to 7 and Kejriwal 3 to 4. Yeah, uh, UPA government, I, I'll give se uh, 7, 7 and a half on 10. And uh, Narendra Modi, I doubt his model, maybe 5, 5 on 10. And Arvind Kejriwal uh, banning FDI, uh, I don't, would, I wouldn't like to give him any marks. 6 to Rahul Gandhi, uh, something like uh, 7 to Narendra Modi, and something like 6 to Arvind Kejriwal as well. Not, because his economics, I don't believe, However immature it is, it can evolve into a broad social democratic agenda for India.